Hello and welcome to the long-awaited video about the types of kicking used in the game of rugby. Uh, it's, this is not going to be telling you how to execute these types of kicks, it's more looking at the tactics behind kicking and how as St. Eyes Rugby Club we can use it in our own game. Uh, just a heads up to all the video I've used, uh, all rights are reserved by the people while playing in the game on whoever owns it. I'm just using it here for educational purposes, so please don't sue me or whatever. And don't please don't block this video because I believe it's kind of key to helping educate people about the tactics of rugby. In this first section of the video, we're going to be looking at the punts. So I would define the punt as a long range distance kick. Uh, so it's not an up and under which goes maybe 20 metres and it's really high. The punt is usually what you use off a penalty to find touch or to clear your own lines. That's kind of the main gist of this part of the video. Uh, as we go through, we'll look at real in-game examples of different uses of the punt and how, as St Ives, we are going to use it. As There are two types of punt, just so you know. Uh, you have the normal just hoof it, which isn't very, it doesn't go as far as the spiral punt, which is quite hard to perfect, but once you've got it, it can go further than the normal just hoof it and hope. So, just so you know, uh, welcome to the types of kicking on punting. Uh, so, if we get right in then, it's we're going to look at the too clear section of the use of the punt. Uh, our first example will be from the Sharks v... Haguara's game, so enjoy. Oh, created the space, Sanchez. So, as you saw in that clip, Nicolas Sanchez has received the ball from Martin Landalho of the Haguara's deep in his own half, uh, about five metres behind his own line. So, his only real option is to kick it away. You've got to be really meticulous when you're playing this game so that you know when you're going to use it because if you try and run it from there if you get tackled behind your own line it's their scrum so it's an instant try scoring opportunity and at our age unless you're like properly good at tackling and stopping those rucks you have to then defend maybe for another two phases before they crash over the Philly. Good covering from the left wing. In this example, Buffeni has come onto a loose ball and is just inside his 22. And that's really key to this type of kicking using the pud. Is because if you are in your 22, it can go out on the full, which means it doesn't have to bounce and there's no variables as such. So long as you get a good contact, you should be able to gain ground and stop the opposition attacking and relieve some pressure. So if he was outside his 22, he'd have to make it bounce, which adds the variable of it bouncing the wrong way, uh, especially at our age, because we can't all exactly predict where it's going to go. But this example means he can find the touch line and just advances his team slowly up the pitch. And with this t type of astute kicking, we can now relieve pressure. However, it is always key to remember that we are not professional. So we are playing against not so professional teams. So if we can get, say, a lucky break on the outside, then it's worth going for that because some of our kicking this season hasn't been great. It's just sat in the middle of the field. If we're in our 22, you don't kick it up, you kick it out. So if you want to do that, for example, against Undal, where you kick it just straight to them, they just give it to number 12 and he was pacey enough to go round, not just like me, who's, we all know, really slow, uh, but around, if Owen had been there, probably Owen, and he just outpaced everyone, which means he could run around the line. So... Linda Ho, an opportunity to clear. Shots never on sides. Uh, penalty, Jaguars. Oh, that's a coach killer, own AJ. Under pressure, the Jaguars under pressure. Even if they put good pressure, they without the penalty, they'd all got the attacking line out. So they've just this example off of Sharks penalty is of the Jaguar 
Jackie was kicking uh, from a penalty. Uh, so that is definitely our main use, especially in our own 22. Even our own half of a penalty, you've got to kick to touch. Unless we're right in the middle of the field, there's no point running it. Because if you look at our team, we're not the biggest, so we haven't got the multiple options that teams often have. So we can use maybe Adam and Josh Briggs. But as soon as they know that those are the two we're going to pass it to, then we've only got really three options, which is a pass out the back or to those two. And often we'll get through for the first two times, but then they'll get driven back and we'll have to offload anyway. So try and find touch, at least in our own half, so we can drive it forward. But looking more at this uh, Nicholas Sanchez technique, he's kind of planted his foot there. He's picked his spot on the ground so he knows exactly where he's placing it so he can focus all his power through his kicking leg. So I've cut this clip a bit shorter than I'd have liked but it's mainly to save time. So uh, Matthias Moroni, the outside centre of the Haguares, is kicking from inside his 22 off at like a turnover and loose ball. So he's got to really focus on planting his foot in the right place and making sure he's finding touch. Because if the Sharks run this back, then there's definitely space. Because if you think about it, he'll have to then run across the entire pitch. So this really also focuses on our, attacking, our defensive line off a kick. But that will come later when I focus on the defence of a punt or kicking in general. But the main problem here is he's going backwards so he's running backwards and then forwards which means he could be off balance and that could affect the result of the kick as you can see in that clip the Jag Haguares weren't deep enough which allowed the open side flank I think it was to cover the ground which is one of the main problems when you're kicking to clear from open play is you've got to maintain your depth it might feel like you're just going backwards and you're losing ground, but it's quite key because if they get that touch on the ball, then they all become onside, which is one thing. And it also throws a variable in and you'll probably end up going backwards before you can actually go forward and you'll have to build that platform again. Because one of the things you don't want to do, uh, one of the things that increases the chance of a charge down is slow ball or something of the like where they've just got it off uh just got it off loose ball i think and then they'll be charged down because there's so many players already there that it's completely pointless to try and kick it but they do anyway Stop yet. so in that clip we saw the haguaras put the ball high and long so that is quite key for how uh, we need to kick. So we definitely need that length from our punts, but we also need to make sure they're relatively high. So if they do go wrong, that they'll stay in field. Whereas if we really want length, like off a penalty kick, and we're right on our five meter line, then hoof it rather than focusing on getting that height. You want it nice and low, just over their heads. So they could possibly keep it in. But at our age group, it's highly unlikely they will. And also, we've got to make sure we make touch because it just relieves that pressure. And the high ball also, if it doesn't, means our defensive line can set because we're going to remember how to defend off kicks. Because that is, if we are going to kick, that is one of our main problems. Uh, this section on to gain ground is pretty much the same as the last section it looks i'm going to try and look more in depth at how they're kicking it so off penalties like looking at where their foot placement is because otherwise you're just going to hear me rambling on about the same old stuff and the majority of the examples are from penalty kicks but there's some other stuff in there as well jaguars got position looking to play football up, up country yeah get themselves in good position so if we look at Nicolas Sanchez's position there, uh, we can see that he's leaning back. And because he's leaning back so he can get that extra height, he's in the middle of the field. So if he gets that extra height, it means if he does mistouch, it stays in. And if it goes 
near the touchline, uh, they won't be able to get it because it's over their heads before they can get there. But the main uh, point here is his, it'd be his right arm is pointing down as drop the ball, but his other arm has just pointed out and opening up his chest. And his eyes are fixed firmly on the ball so that there's nothing that's going to happen to it. So he knows exactly where it is to maximise the point of contact. Just isolated, first man in. Over the ball. Good position. The Sharks are... So if you look at that video, you can see that the Sharks have just been a bit indisciplined there and given away the penalty. But the... Jaguars are now, in, if you see in the back, number two, Augustin Creevy, one of the best hookers in the world, knows his job, and he's organising for the next line-out they're going to do, so they don't have to make calls which can be discerned by the opposition. Also, it's a very quick kick to touch, because they know the game plan. If you know what you're going to do in most situations, then you just react, and it means the Sharks are still reforming, which means if you do make... A mistake they won't be able to react as quickly to as if it's a proper planned kick that's earning the right to go forward to the shots they get penalized Jakob Papers is angling in uh, as you saw in that clip he's very close to the touch line so he's just trying to angle it into touch you want a little bit of Less angle than if you're wider, because the more angle you have, the shorter the kick is going to be. But it's very key to make sure you're focusing on getting the angle rather than the distance. Because if you get the angle, at least it goes into touch, rather than if you're focused on the distance. They might have a Malanga or Undall's number 12 sitting right at the back, just able to run it forward. Or they might even have someone like me, who can just run and then pass it to someone who's quick, like... Owen or Anton. Scrum or lock, AJ? I, I'm not sure I have, but I know that I want him. So if you see in that clip, uh, he's made a mistake with his kick. You can see, by the way, his body reacts as soon as he's kicked it. Just that moment of indecision as to whether it's going to make it. And if you look at the right wing, they've still got a runner chasing after it, just in case. Because if they just manage to keep it in with a fingertip and it goes backwards then the winger is still able to get it there. Farrell again, but it's stolen. It's that bar of soap time, I think. I'm squirting out on the Barbarian side. And Hogg has a long way to go back. So this is the British and Irish Lions game against the Barbarians. It was in Hong Kong, so that's why there was... A knock on and the commentators are talking about bar of soap because it's so hot and humid there but the way i think it's morgan power who's playing scrum half reacts to the ball coming loose and he notices the space in behind the ability to just notice that space means because if you've got those quick players they'll be able to get after it so if you even if i'm kicking or remember dan Hurst kick on the game against was it I can't remember who it was against, but it got in the award, the uh, trier of the match or man of the match award. So just that ability to recognise where the space is and exploit the space is really quite key. Bring them on. Mark that, please. So, as you can see in that clip from the Wales v Ireland game, uh, it's really quite key how they use their boots there, because they can actually see behind the space, like the last clip of the Barbarians game, they saw the space and they've managed to hoof it at least, I'd say, 80 metres down the pitch. Uh, just a heads up, if you're really interested in kicking those at the time were probably the two best kicking sides in the world. So if you're really interested in that, they've got Johnny Sexton and Dan Bigger playing that game. And also there was, I think it was like 30 phase rugby in a row with Ireland attacking on the Welsh line. I won't spoil the result, but just if you are interested in 
some of the tactics in that game uh, I recommend going and seeing it but back, coming back to the video it the ability to exploit space is really key to how we have to play against Undo we were managing to go round the corner go round the corner go round the corner but if we could add a kicking game so we relieve pressure from that play because we identified one of our strengths that we didn't really know was there in a sad way because we didn't know we could keep the ball for long periods of time just going through the phases through the phases through the phases because we're not like the best our backs no offense can't really outpace them we saw that with Undal their number 12 literally ran around our wing as he was that fast we without Owen and Anton we haven't got really any pace but we saw with our forwards able to take it through the middle like Dan Hurst and Aaron just their straight running managed to get us almost over the line so that ability could come in really helpfully but we've just got to remember that if we are in our half just build it build it build it and then we can release the kick this is our third section on the punt probably third and final I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this but uh, this is before I've released the video, so uh, YOLO, as the kids of three years ago said. Uh, in this, we're going to look more at the attacking application of how to use our chip punts, I like to call them, or bombs, some might say, like up and unders. This will involve some of that, and we're going to look at aerial skills used, and also the ability to place delicate chips in behind the... Blacks <laughs> ran into the era of Dan Carter. Another all black there, Joe Rocker Thocker with a tackle. And then join playing with each other again. Farrell just tries to open out here. And so as you saw during that clip, there's kind of two parts to it that I'm going to focus on. Uh, the first part is Hogg's eyes were straight on the ball. He didn't flinch and as soon as he hit the ground, the line was there to hit him, but he manages to hold on and recycle the ball, which is really key for our back row players, or back three players and back row players, everyone to be able to do, just to catch eyes on the ball and out jump the opposition, because some really good tries have come from that, uh, and also opportunities to attack, like the next part of the video, uh, or clip I should say, not video, uh, will also tell, uh, show that and how that recyclability, I guess, recyclability is what I'm going to go with, uh, enables Owen Farrell to put the ball in behind the Barbarians line. And except for a poor kick, he would have been able to do that. Uh, so one key part about that jump is how he's able to propel himself up and his knee comes up as well. Not only is that extra force driving him up, but it's also protecting him from the onrushing players. If you're uh, into that kind of getting up into the air and competing, uh, watch the Wales Island game that I've already alluded to, and also go and watch some sevens because some of the good tries actually come off kickoffs where they out jumped. And look, uh, some rugby league tries will be good for that, especially, and also the Australia Scotland game with. Israel Falau's try, that's uh, from Rugby League and Aussie Rules. Aussie Rules, just to focus mainly on the jumping. But if we get back to the rugby for a moment, uh, Owen Farrell is inexperienced at the time, but he's on a Lions tour. He's not like the Owen Farrell today, from what I remember, considering they've just been beaten 30 points to 3, but I'm not allowed to mention that because that would put you all off this video. Uh, so the kick is poor, it goes straight to the fullback, so it was a good idea, he's just, you've got to execute those kicks, because the full, I think it's the fullback, he comes running straight onto it, so he's able to cover the ground so much faster than if he's going backwards and having to loop around, so the chase has to be good if the kick is poor, but a good kick, if you're turning them, means you can organise the chase much more effectively. Sonatori and the Jaguar Sanchez. So in that clip uh, of the Sharks v Haguara's game, uh, we see Senatore has just got it back for the Jaguars and they've passed it to their kicker. 
and he's gone for it. It's quite a high kick, but it's pumped because it's targeting that space in behind. It's quite a long kick, and he's trying to get it to bounce in behind those two Sharks defenders you can see on the right-hand side. One's on the 10-meter line, and then one's further up the pitch towards the touch line, and he's just off it. And there's a lot of space, if you can see it, in the middle right section, if that makes sense. And that's the kind of space we want to be hitting with our attacking kicks, just so we can exploit the space in behind the line. Alemano, Stop Stop. So, as you could see in that clip, Nicolas Sanchez has kicked it in behind the shots. Right at the end, you could see them retreating. And the ball has gone over their heads, which means the bounce might bounce high enough to bounce over their heads again. And also, it means they won't be able to come back at pace with it. Uh, so, that's a really good skill to have in your arms. Whatever rolls on Alliance Tour is Elliot Daly, left out of the England Tour Party to South America. So, Elliot Daly has just received the ball. Good pass, which makes it easier for him to attack. Uh, the space and he's chosen rather than to run it in and keep possession you've got to keep the pressure up on your opposition so in the space behind the ruck you'll usually have your nine sweeping so that those chips don't really work but the winger will also drop back and cover the touch line on either side obviously and the fullback so you need to work in a tandem but the Elliot Daly chip is left footed uh, straight in into the space and then you've got to try and put them in a corner so you can drag the opposition into touch and keep them under pressure because there's this uh you want to try and attack coughing corner this is where for right footed kickers it's harder to gain more ground because you've got to kick like it's hard to explain it's your I think it's your right hand corner because you can't get as much of an angle on it so it's got to go closer to 22 which means you gain more ground from your kick i suppose the hot bit always stays <laughs> call it black rain here when it sets in for a few days you can't see in front of your nose and thankfully the players wouldn't mind a bit of it now well, that really would have ruined the game uh, so if you look at the field there it's a nice wide angle shot that they've used which is quite nice but there's lots of space and the wingers are able to cut in so if you're going to call a cross kick wingers you need to go pretty much on the touchline or wider than your opposite number because then he's watching the ball and you're coming in from his blind side so he can't actually see you also needs to be really high you need to try because 90% of the time, it's not actually, if you're looking at a try line situation, it's not actually the catcher who scores. It's usually just a tap back to the closest inside man. So there should always be two people going for that cross kick, the opposition and the main person. But there should also be our player backing up and trying to win that ball. Because if you get it just the right height, it, they'll be catching it above their head. And not many people at our age can do that, or, as well as that. If we get the tap back, then you've got an easy stroller because you also have a two-on-one then, either with the fullback by runners coming from your left, if it's from the left-hand side where the ball is kicked and coming through the middle, or you can just go for the corner and then the guy who jumped for the ball is already travelling forward. So if you've got it, you just call, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. And then you can attack the corner and you'll have your man backing you up on the outside. So as we look at this clip, Dan Bigger has soared up for that ball and it's his high knees there again, like the player I showed you earlier, I think that Stuart Hogg has gone up and claimed it earlier, but Dan Bigger, his knee is pretty much a right angle and he's going forward onto the ball towards the defenders, meaning it has to be a two-man tackle drawing in additional two players. But if you look in the left corner, it's number 8, it's Lupe Falata, number 14, North. They're kind of boxing Simon Zebo, the Irish winger, in there, which is 
quite good because if you can box them in, then they haven't got width. So if you can recycle it quick enough, you can then spin it wide. And if you've drawn in enough players with, with your catch, then you can stop them attacking. You can go further down the pitch than their kick has actually brought them. So uh, as you can see in this snapshot image, it really shows the difference in the leap. Uh, Halfpenny has come onto this fly and he's chased his own little chip kick and he's let his knee up, ready to push away Connor Murray. But the key is Halfpenny is moving and Connor Murray has just jumped straight up so he can't actually get enough height. As well as this, as well as moving up, Halfpenny is also moving forwards as he's going up. So he's actually going to push Connor Murray out of the way. And this will enable him to get the ball. And then if he has enough support there, you can go quickly off that. So as a full back or a winger, if you are confident you can do that, then you might receive it deep in your own half after they've kicked it. Or you might see a little bit of space as your wingers come up and the full back is alone. If you can put it on the winger or on the full back, you've got to get it right on their head. So they have to jump up and they can't go backwards and then onto it and things or just onto it because otherwise you lose that advantage and them having to jump straight up and then you managing to fairly contest the ball in the air. in here. I'm sorry about this image's blurriness, but the basic point I'm trying to illustrate here is the space behind the line that Sexton is trying to attack. So against a team at our age, if you can do that, that would be superb. Because it is widely agreed, I would say, that Halfpenny is one of the best positional fullbacks. He might not be good at attacking, but he's able to cover, which means he can often push another winger up into the line. You don't need a whole tandem system. But coming back to the original point, Sexton drops it on a tee, and if Halfpenny isn't there to cover it, he's gained them. He's put Wales back under pressure, and then they keep coming back under pressure again and again. And they've just scored, so eventually you're going to have to crack. But if you want to do it, make sure you don't kick it directly out. So to sum up that part of the video, we want to use the punt to clear and to gain ground. That's kind of the same point, but it's the gaining ground is more defensive. So you've got to make sure you can consolidate that and also using a solid defensive line to push up and follow up, to clear, making sure we're finding touch when we need to in our own half and making sure if we are kicking for touch, we know the rules. So t if we're in our 22, it can go straight out. If we're not, you have to bounce it first and also to attack the space. And that really focused on using our knee in front of us to guard and push away our, the defender. And also on attacking the space in behind by using little chip punts so you're making the defence turn around and forcing them to run back and recover. So uh, now moving on to the next section, uh, it's the, another type of kick, it's the chip cross and grubber. I've kind of grouped these together because they're all similar kind of kicks uh, in their use and what the aims are when you're taking a chip a cross or a grubber so i've kind of grouped this together by where you're going to use them when you're taking them so the first section is called in the center Alemano, Stop. Stop. so as you can see this is the second use of this clip uh, i might repeat them again just to emphasize the point of how to use the chip kick as you can see the sharp defense is maybe three or four meters away from Nicolas Sanchez in this so 
he's seen the space in behind and you have to exploit the space uh using that he just lifted it over their heads and because they're not close enough to charge down it's work and you're targeting the space usually behind the winger and in between the fullback you exploiting that space means you can actually move the opposition around and it also puts doubt in the fullback if you're good enough because he doesn't know where to stand and especially at our age they're not usually that good positionally so we can definitely exploit that We'll dab over the top from Iglesias. So this grubber used by the Haguaros is really key because if you see, it's just come off a ruck, I think. So look behind that. If you look in the bottom left corner, there's one Sharks defender covering that middle channel. The full bike's on the 22 far left because they're expecting it to come wide because they've got three, two men really wide. And he, you've noticed the space because there's no real nine coverage there. So Joby and whoever else plays nine, you need to make sure you're working across that back. You can take maybe five metres behind just to cover. Because one, you're acting as an early fullback, as it were. But also covering those grubbers and chips because that is your primary role. Uh, sorry there's no clip for this. I couldn't be bothered, frankly, because... This is actually quite painstaking work, but getting on to the rugby, uh, I've put a few annotations on this uh, picture. Uh, this is focusing on Sexton's small chip, which comes over the top of the Welsh defence. And he's targeting that halfway area, because if you look, he's got Simon Zebo going between number 12 which in this case is Jamie Roberts and number 13 which is Jonathan Davis but if you look behind the Welsh line on the left there's Reese Webb is coming across and if the defence is rushing up you can tell by the way Wales are positioned there playing with maybe a blitz defence but Jonathan Davis has read it so it's not as clear but the way section chips, he's aiming for the space that is traditionally left by a fast rush defence, which is one of the use of in the centre of the field of a chip and a grubber, because it means you can just exploit space in behind oncoming defenders. But Rhys Webb and Jonathan Davis are alert, meaning that the chip will maybe work. I can't remember exactly what happens. I think uh, they managed to recover it, Wales. So... They re retreat and grab it back, but it's just that awareness that there is space behind a rushing defence. Uh, it's a bit of a blurry image again, but that might just be my monitor. Uh, so, uh, Jonathan Sexton is attempting a left-footed chip, considering he's a right-footed chip uh, kicker. That's quite brave, but the fact he's trying to exploit the winger is really good. Because he's targeting that space. Look again, if you look at the Welsh line, his kick is a bit longer this time, but if you look at the Welsh line, you have Wilberton at seven, then Aaron Jarvis, I think, is playing prop after a Samson Lee injury. Chalupe Falatau is also, and they've got a V shape, and I think it's George North is on the wing, and he's now having to go back to try and recover. Confidence is growing in this player, you can tell, because weak foot chip running across is really difficult to kick but if you can pull that off well then well done automatic man of the mat whether or not you miss a hundred tackles and especially if we score from it because uh you're using your weak foot to exploit space in behind and it's just such a difficult kick to pull off so now we're going to look at when we use grubbers chips and cross kicks I think I don't think I've actually got any cross kicks in this but it's kind of targeting the wings and where the space is and just how we use the kicks on the wing Santiago Cordero a little dab over the top looking for an opening the... so so in this clip we can see Santiago Cordero is trying to exploit uh, the space behind the onrushing Sharks winger. It's a nice little chip. There's two defenders come rushing at him and the presence of mind just to lift it over them. Uh, I can't remember the result of the kick, but 
I think it bounced into touch. So just exploiting that pace that he has, he's one of the fastest men in world rugby. So Owen or Archie and whoever's up, Josh and Finley, if you can target the space in behind those wingers as they rush towards you using your kicking game, that could really be advantageous to so our he team. didn't. Ball, please. And look at the pace. He's about 10 metres behind any of the Sharks players. Never stopped running. Look at him. Owen didn't. So in that clip, you saw a Haguaro's try, typical Haguaro's, playing with that Ita Argentinian flair. Uh, the winger has grubbed it down the touchline, and you're looking to grubber it there because if it's in the air, there's air friction and uh, wind plays more of a role, and that means the ball can hang, which means the fullback or the outside centre who's or the scrum half who's covering has more time to make the ball whereas the grubber allows the Haguaro's 15 who I can't remember where it was for this game to come across and actually score a try so the use of a grubber on the wing could be really influential is Nicolas Sanchez the toe up field so this toe up field by Nicolas Sanchez is really clever play by the international fly half. He's just able to turn around the defence and force them to rethink how they're going to try and stop them. Because he knows he's going to be shepherding into touch. He could try a step, but he will get hit by the drift defence that the Sharks are deploying. So you just kick it behind, force them to turn, and then you're pinning them back. And at the time, Haguaras are winning. They're down to Iglesias. With... Uh, by two players because of their indiscipline, which is good because they're the Haguaras and that's what we like about them. Uh, and there's only nine seconds left, so they're just trying to pin the say, uh, sail sharks, Durban sharks back. So in that final very short clip, you could see the Haguaras just trying to turn the opposition around. Uh, we've already shown how it's used to turn the opposition around because you want to kind of drive them back and it's really key to not wasting time but if you can attack that space then it allows you just to drive he's got forwards there so even if the fullback gets across he can either drive them into touch so it's another way of getting an unorthodox I'm going to call it unorthodox turnovers like pulling them into touch or literally like a normal turnover, but literally as soon as their winger goes in, he's already got, I think it's Thomas Lavini in the Argentina flag scrum cap, and he, the winger goes over, he just gets cleaned out, and then you've got another, you've got another player there just ready to play it away, and it just keeps the defence having to keep someone back, and they can't commit fully to what they want to do. So... What are we going to use grubbers for? Well, primarily, I would say we're going to use it to turn the opposition. Like I explained in that last uh, short uh, snapshot, we've decided that we know how we can use the grubber to turn the opposition around, get those unorthodox turnovers, and keep the opposition under pressure. Pressure is so key in rugby because if you have the territory... It, you mean, it means they can't really score. Possession in football is really key because you have to have it to score. Whereas defence, as one of the senior players said on one of in one of the training sessions, defence is actually just attacking without the ball in rugby. So keeping the opposition pinned back and forcing them to be stupid with the ball is actually a really good form of attack. So if, even if they have the ball and our tackling is good enough, we just slide it back. Territory is so much more important. We just slide it back, make the tackle, maybe get a turnover, an intercept. Yes, they might go the length, but we've at least tried to try something different.